Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Race number six at Churchill Downs on Kentucky Oaks Friday is the grade one $750,000 La Troyenne. Phillies and mares going a mile and a 16th. Let's take a look at this field. And Mike, if there is one horse in the country that loves Churchill Downs, it is the number two, She Dares the Devil. She is five for five on the main track here, including a victory in this race last year and a win in the 2020 Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, right. She's a, a three-time grade one winner, Dan, and she's not facing grade one quality, quality competition in this race. Um, the real question with, with she, she Dares the Devil on Friday, Dan, is is she going to bounce back her off of her Azari seasonal debut? Um, wasn't her greatest performance. Uh, we'll see if she can rebound. I think the key to this race is going to be how Florent Giroux handles her leaving the gate. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. We know she bears the devil's a very fast horse. I have to think that she's going to the front. They're not going to let temper time take it away from her, are they? No, they got to put this horse on the lead. Um, she's probably faster than temper time early anyway, Dan. And it just feels like her preferred running style is to be up on the pace. She has the inside draw here. Um, I think she'll be on the front. Steve Asmussen trains the number one jilted bride. Six to one on the morning line. Louis Sayas takes the mount. Already graded stakes placed in her career. She got a little bit of a confidence booster last time out. Dropping into the allowance race will show you at Oaklawn Park. It was over a wet track and there's a chance she'll get a wet track again on Friday. Uh, she sat a nice trip in this race. The pace wasn't very fast. She perched herself on the outside. She was odds on and she won like it. Yeah, a race she was supposed to win, um, and she did win. She did win very easily, though. I guess that's a good thing for her. Um, and maybe it's the best race she's ever run, Dan, um, out of her last uh, five starts since they came back off a little bit of a layup. She's run 386 buyers, um, and that's the best she's ever run in her life. I, 86 isn't going to get it done here. She's going to have to take a pretty big step forward. She dares the devil is the number two. Again, her record speaks for itself. She's won half of her 18 lifetime starts, five for five at Churchill. She's never run on a wet track. I guess that could be a question mark, but she looks like the controlling speed. Let's talk a little bit about her race in the Azaria. It was her first start since the Breeders' Cup, a race in which she was too close to a very, very fast pace. She made the lead. I didn't think she had a lot of excuses. I think you could make the argument that Pauline's Pearl, who's also in this race, ran just as well, if not better. Yeah, she might have. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, to me, the, the only question in this race, Dan, because it's such a good spot for She Dares the Devil. I mean, the only question is, is she going to run better here? Did she need that race off the layup last time? Did the Breeders' Cup, where, as you mentioned, she was right up there um, on a wicked pace and actually ran pretty well that day. Did that just take everything out of her? Um, I think those are real questions that she's going to have to answer here. But if she can still run anything even close to her best race, um, I just think she's going to beat this field. She's too good for these horses. The number three temper time is going to be making her stakes debut for Dale Romans. And she deserves an opportunity to get some black type. She's won her last two races, including this effort at Keeneland during the recently concluded spring meeting. And she got right up close to the pace over a wet track. She took over at ease on the far turn and she's on her way. But talk about buyer speed figures. This race only came back in 80 and she has yet to buy her 82 in her life. She does seem to like a wet track. She does like a wet track. She's got a little bit of speed. Um, she has won each of her last two starts um, on dirt. So, you know, some things to like about her. Um, but as you've already pointed out, she hasn't run fast enough to beat this field. So I guess you just have to ask yourself, um, is she good enough to go with horses like this if everybody shows up and runs their best race? Um, and I think that's a, a real question for temper time, but she will be a fair price. Trainer Rob Atris has done a very nice job with the four battle bling at six to one on the morning line and a Rad Ortiz Jr. aboard. Claimed the source for 62-5 at Aqueduct last year. They've run her three times in stakes. She's got one win in two close seconds, including this effort in the top flight going a mile and an eighth at Aqueduct last time out. Now, I know the fractions weren't very fast, but I think this pace was solid and battle blings in behind horses. She's going to angle down towards the inside. She'll fire late in this race, and that's what she's been doing since being claimed by actress uh she's run a couple of fast races but nothing in the stratosphere of she dares the devil yeah she is in really good form right now it's interesting that they're going to ship her to churchill to run in a grade one race um as you pointed out i mean been right there in each of her last four starts one win three close seconds the you know the little problem that i have with her dan is in all three of those close runner-up uh finishes recently she could have won any one of those races and she didn't get the job done um, I understand that Exotic West, the horse that we just saw, you know, out finish her there. Exotic West 
is a former claiming horse. Um, the flip side of that is she's in really, really good form right now. That win right there. Save the ladies where she dropped her rider at the start. She's won four dirt races in a row. Hall of Famer Mike Smith takes up the mount on the five. She's all wolf. This is an Oklahoma bred who's done some really good work in her career. They found a really good spot for her in the Bayacoa. All of the big names in the division weren't there. And she ran very well to be second. Now, last time out in the Azari, she was no match for CC and Pauline's Pearl, but she was actually running on a little bit at the end of that race. This mare is in excellent form. The problem is, I just am not sure if she can beat the top two in here. Yeah, I don't know if she can either. She, To me, she's the most interesting long shot in the race, if that's the direction that you're looking to go in. Um you know, listen, she did her very best in that Azari last time. Uh, not good enough to go with those horses, but she tried real hard, and I thought she ran pretty well. Pauline's Pearl is probably the alternative to folks that want to look elsewhere from She Dares the Devil. She finished ahead of three of these horses in the Azari, including She Dares the Devil, and she didn't get off to a great break that day. Let's watch the stretch run of the Azari. Pauline's Pearl, again, broke a little bit slowly, is now making up ground on the outside. She Dares the Devil is on the lead down towards the inside. She's getting tired. CC strikes the front. Pauline's Pearl, very game to run second. CC came back, didn't disgrace herself at all, and running third in the Apple Blossom with 100 buyer. This this film still may have some upside, Mike. Yeah, I think she does. And this is an okay performance. Now, as we're watching the replay, you have to remember that it probably wasn't really as close as the final margin suggests there because CC just sort of started idling right. on the lead there. She thought the race was over. It gave Pauline's Pearl a chance to close her down. She didn't do it. Um, but I still thought she ran well, Dan. And listen, she was improving at the end of last year. I liked her return from the layoff in a really good spot. Um, in the Houston Ladies Classic. She could take another step forward here and make it things really, really hard on She Dares the Devil. Ava's Grace, the number seven, written by David Cohen for Robertino Diodoro, was beaten a country mile in the Azari two starts back, but it was only her second start off of a lengthy layoff. Talk about a confidence boost. She found a dreadful field when she dropped in class last time out. Let's watch this race at Oaklawn Park. She is odds on. She made the lead. She didn't have to go fast. It was nice to see her win like she was supposed to. Whether she classes up with these horses is a different story, but she does have some tactical speed. She did show some ability as a three-year-old and maybe she's racing herself back into shape uh, yeah I, I feel the same way about her I mean I, I like her as a horse I do think she has some talent and um I thought it was interesting you know she wired that field it wasn't a good field as you've already pointed out um but at the end of the day the two best races of her life um came when they used her speed so I, I wonder if that's going to be the plan now for for Diodoro and Cohen going forward they're just going to try to send her out of there uh, maybe that's her preferred running style the question is whether she's fast enough to rest the lead away from She yeah. Dares the Devil. I doubt it if She Dares the Devil shows her usual speed, but I expect Ava's Grace to be up close. Please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. It's Triple Crown season. It's the most exciting time of the year for horse players. Get the latest content from DRF TV. Top pick time in here. Mike, I am not picking a horse that is a likely winner at all, but I do want to focus in on Ava's Grace, the horse we talked about. I think she's going to run better than her price, and she's going to be a big price on the tote. I think they're going to use her speed and maybe she could split the uh, the favorites, if not pulling up a huge upset. I'm not going to argue with anyone who wants to reach for a price in here, Dan. I was not thrilled with She Dares the Devil's Race last time. I wanted to pick against her. Um, I just couldn't find the horse to do it with. I, I feel like the favorites are going to be real tough in here and I picked them in order. She dares the devil. Let's see if she can make it six for six at Churchill Downs. Two, six, four, seven for Mike. Seven, two, six, five for me. It's the grade one lot Troy and it's Kentucky Oaks Friday at Churchill Downs. Good luck.